Hey guys, my name is Dan Ballard, pro travel and landscape photographer. We're here at uh, Bandon Beach in Oregon, and I wanted to just talk to you guys a little bit about uh, the A7R3 versus the A7 III. Um, I've been getting quite a few questions about that um, since I did my you know, switching from Nikon to Sony video. I've gotten a lot of emails, people asking me, um, you know, basically, you know, should I get the A7R or should I get the A7? Um, so I just thought I'd cover that really quickly. Um, there's tons of videos out there that, you know, do full comparisons, um, that, you know, compare all the specs and, and really go in depth. I'm not going to do that here at all. I um, just want to talk to you guys about why I definitely think you should get the A7R3. Um, kind of hands down. Now, keep in mind, if budget's a main concern, if, if you're really, you know, watching that, if that's a big issue, the A7 III is going to be amazing. It's going to be an excellent camera. You can't go wrong. You're going to be able to make great, amazing photos with that thing. Or with the older, you know, A7 II or the A7 II um, or a cell phone. Um, so don't stress about it too much. Um, really, it, both are great cameras. Um, but if budget really isn't that big of an issue if you're deciding between the two, uh, really primarily based on just the megapixels, which I think most people are, uh, then I definitely say go with the A7R3. Um, I've gotten a lot of emails kind of along the lines of, you know, hey Dan, you know, I'm a pretty serious photographer, uh, I do this a lot, but I don't really feel like I need 40 megapixels, um, I don't do a lot of, you know, large printing, shouldn't I go with the A7 III? Um, and my answer is no for uh, a few reasons. Um, all of them basically to do with resolution, um, but not in the way that you would think, not in, in terms of, okay, um, you know, we need to make huge giant prints, we really need 42 megapixels to, you know, create high quality images, uh, not for that reason at all. Um, I feel like, you know, 24 megapixels is kind of a sweet spot. So I really like that idea. You don't need more than that to really create great images. Um, where I think it really comes into play and where I think it's so important to go with the A7R3 uh, really has to do with resolution in terms of cropping. So for me, it's basically three different things uh, that are just kind of huge factors. Um, the first one is basically just simply being able to crop. Um, that's such a huge thing. Um, always try to get it right in the field, always try to zoom in in the field, always try to move your feet in the field, you know, always try to make sure that you're propping as little as possible, um, but a lot of times you just mess up. Um, a lot of times you don't really see something or you, um, you're really working on a, a foreground, for example, and then realize that maybe the shot without the foreground was actually a better image. Um, this shot here from Patagonia is a really good example. I mean, I, I just messed up big time on this thing. Um, since I was shooting with a 36 megapixel Nikon at the time, um, I was able to do this really massive crop. I, I never cropped this much. Um, but in this situation, I had to. Um, and I still can do a, you know, a fairly good sized print, uh, even, even after this has been cropped with the A7R 3 even more so. So if you have to crop, you have to really go in, you have that opportunity. Um, number two, similar idea, it has to do with cropping, but in this case, it's with the camera itself. I love the A7R 3 uh, for its ability to set all the custom uh, buttons. And in this case, we can set, for example, C3 uh, to go to crop mode. Um, I love this. Um, whenever I'm, you know, at 24 millimeter, I use a Sony 12 to 24 here. Whenever I'm at 24 millimeters, I have 36 megapixel uh, lens now. So that's very usable. It turns this lens that's a little limited into a super usable lens. Uh, my 85 millimeter, which is the other lens I have, I only use two lenses. The 85 millimeter, I hit C3, goes to crop mode, you know, gives me an 18 megapixel, 127 millimeter lens. So it just makes these two lenses really versatile. Um, if you're using the setup that I really strongly recommend, which is a 16 to 35, and then a 70 to 200 millimeter, uh, this is even better. You know, then that 16 to 35, that's really the only lens you need, uh, kind of in the wide realm. You have a 16 to, you know, in the, in the 50 range. And then the 7200 becomes this really versatile lens as well uh, because you have such range with it once you are in crop mode. Again, you still have an 18 megapixel image, so this is really, really nice. Um, something that just makes this camera so versatile. Um, if you're shooting with the A7 III, you, you know, of course, don't have that ability, or at least, at least you don't have a high, a high enough uh, megapixel count for it to really be practical. So that's reason number two, really valuable. I absolutely love that ability on this thing. 
Uh, and then reason number three, a little more complicated, don't wanna really go into it all that much here, um, but if you do any kind of um, focal length stacking or focal length shifting, whatever you wanna call it, um, basically where, you know, say you're shooting landscapes and you see this, you know, really massive peak in front of you and you're standing there, then you go and, you know, go to 12 millimeters and that peak just shrinks, it becomes so small, so much smaller than, than it is in real life. So a lot of times what people will do is take the shot at 12 millimeters and then zoom into you know, 24 millimeters or put a different lens on, take the scene again, and then basically in Photoshop, you, know, you blend those two together and that gives you a peak that's a little bit more, a little closer to the size uh, that it should be or that it was in real life. It's so much easier to do that uh, in Photoshop afterwards without changing focal lengths. So what I basically do is just set up my, my comp, do it just like normal, then if I want to, I can bring that background up just a little bit in processing. Um, having that extra resolution really makes that a great option. Um, and it allows you to do that without really having to worry about the quality. Um, so again, another reason um, that having that extra resolution uh, just makes this camera so much stronger. Um, so again, overall, absolutely. Uh, if money, if budget's not a real major concern for you, uh, go with the a7R3. Thanks for watching guys, appreciate it.